Welcome to Real Estate Secrets Unlocked, the podcast that takes you inside the minds of the industry's top professionals, revealing their top secrets to success. I'm your host, Danielle Damiano. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, get ready to learn the latest trends, strategies, and secrets that will help you succeed. Join us as we go beyond the basics and explore what it takes to make it in the world of real estate. So buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. This is Real Estate Secrets Unlocked. Let's go. (laughs) Hey everybody, it's Danielle Damiano and I am here today with Annie O'Sullivan with Premier Home Experts um, and LPT Realty out of the Tampa Bay area. Um, so thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to let everybody know what you got going on. For sure. Thank you so much. I'm glad we actually got to connect and do this too. This is so fun. <laughs> I know it definitely is. Um, so why don't you talk to, um, talk to me and like tell everybody how long you, how long you've been in real estate and kind of like what you're doing now. Okay, for sure. Um, yeah, it's funny. I still always feel like I'm like a newer agent and everything. I'm like, oh, I haven't been doing it this long. But then like I get asked that and I've been licensed since 2011. So it's been a few years. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, um, but I think it's also because I love learning. I love educating and like advancing to the next level. And so yeah. it really, to me, I'm always feeling like, oh, you know, it's only been a couple of years because there's something else to learn. <laughs> Time flies, right? When you're having fun. So <laughs> seriously. Um, so yeah, I've been with a couple of brokerages during that time. Um, you know, I started with KW for a little while. I was there, um, which was fantastic. And then I went to Remax and then I ended up becoming with an independent broker since then, obviously like LPT. Um, and then through that, it was like this natural progression and growth where, you know, I was my own agent. Um, I never actually joined a team. I just wanted, I'm, I can't even say, I'm not sure if I'm stubborn or if it was just, you know, yeah, stubborn. <laughs> Cause like, there's always easy. And I do suggest, you know, newer agents get with a team because it just helps with your learning curve and really getting into your know, business um, that quicker. But I was like, oh no, I can do this on my own. And like I did, but thankfully it worked out, you know, because of my stubbornness. And so I went from being a solo agent to all of a sudden having a t- an admin. And then that was, you know, 2011 to 2014, just us two. And that was during that, you know, down market. So like I started with building systems where, you know, writing offers and I had a lot of investing clients. And so, you know, being able to like auto upload and send out offers like on a scale that was like, I don't know, 50 to 100 a week. Um, that was it. And then when the market shifted, obviously I had to pivot too, because a lot of my clients were like, oh yeah, we're not going to buy as much because you know it's just not, the prices didn't make sense. And I'm like, okay, cool. So then I went, I'm like, I got to have to do residential real estate now with like more traditional clients, like the people that are going to be moving into these houses. And then I got into, I wanted to, at least this point in time, I did learn hey, I shouldn't have to do it all on my own. There's other successful people doing it out there. So why don't I just fast track that learning process by seeing like coaching and stuff. So then I got with like Mike Ferry coaching and I was with them for five years. And I was like, hey, let's just learn and shortcut all of that learning process, which is fantastic. I definitely recommend getting into coaching. And then as while I was there, I got a team all of a sudden because it was like, hey, I'm growing, I'm expanding. I can't be in all these places at once. And then, um, you know, my man, he was actually a buyer's agent for another team. We got together, we formed our own team in 2017. And then we had four agents under us at the time. Yeah, four. And that was 2019, you know, that grow. And then I got hit with another opportunity that was kind of unreal to say in real estate. Because then I was asked like, hey, we have this uh, pilot beta testing that we want to do in your market area, but we don't know how to do it. And when I mean don't know how to do it, they're like, we don't have any systems. We have no structure. So we need someone with boots on the ground that can really help us like design and create this program. And that was actually Zillow um, stepping in and wanting to do like their iBuyer program where any seller can go on their website, put in information, we would do the pricing for them, you know, CMA wise, Zillow would send them an offer, cash, Zillow would buy the house. They had a renovation team that would go out to the property, renovate it, and then we would get alerted, okay, now it's time to go and release the house. 
And again, like all those moving pieces and stuff, but they didn't have like an internal team and they didn't know how to, because you know how every market's different. Yeah. And so then they're like, we need you to build that for us. And I'm like, wow, this is different. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> and so I was like, yes, let me try this because this is crazy. And I'm like, it was just different. I didn't really know what to expect with it. And that launched October of 2019 and it exploded. Um, I had, you know, just a couple people on staff because, you know, Zillow being Zillow, it's a 24 hour website and everything. So we had to be able to create and design a program where I had staff literally seven days a week, 24 hours a day, like just, you know, time blocks where I'm like, hey, we had minimum standards. Like we had to get a CMA back to Zillow with just basic information, like marketing of a house within five hours of getting the request in and then sending that back to them so that they can make the offer to the client. And then I needed a team of agents that were on the phone to help present the offer from Zillow to the sellers and then put it under contract, help the sellers sell the property. Um, and then I had a whole other department as far as just getting the houses listed because we had to, we were responsible for even the photography and everything. So we had to set up and build all these moving pieces out. And it was, we, we were like, oh, it'll be fine. It's not that crazy to all of a sudden, dude, I need like 20 more staff just <laughs> on the pricing team. I need like 50 more staff to help me list these properties because it went from like 10 to all of a sudden listing like 100 a week. Oh <laughs> so my gosh, just like manpower, right? I mean, so it was definitely a great experience like building that out because they didn't have a CRM. There was no pipeline. There was no like timetables and stuff. So like I had to create it. Wow. Um, so that was really, really cool. But like what um, CRM obviously, did you use when you created that? I actually use monday.com. Okay. Because um, I could track the people, but more importantly, I could track the timelines of the properties better. And most of the CRMs when it comes to real estate, because I've worked in Boomtown, I use Lion Dust, I've used obviously KW was building out theirs at the time and stuff. Um, and then obviously follow up boss I've used now I'm in chime, but they're all people specific and then like transaction and properties secondary. Mm -hmm. I needed it in the reverse because of what we were doing. Right. So then I just ended up putting my own back end on Monday, which is really cool. I still use Monday to this day on different things because you can build it to do whatever. And so it was always property specific. And then like, you know, the transactions were specific that way. And so that's what I ended up building out of there. And then I could create timelines and it still has all the automations and stuff like that right. too, which is really cool. So email marketing and all that stuff was in there. So, and um, the biggest part about that is because I had different departments, like I had a pricing team, I had my, you know, under contract with a seller team, and then I had my listing team and then negotiation team, like when Zillow was a seller, I had all these different departments, but I could track all of it in Monday. Right. So that made it a really nice too. So now out of your staff, how many was like, on site or staff and how many did you use for virtual assistants? Um, I had 12 virtual assistants. Um, and then on staff, um, I did have them in house. However, they were able to work virtually. Um, because again, a lot of the stuff, as long as you had access to the systems right. and like MLS and everything, they didn't necessarily need you in house, which is great because I had no space for them in our office. <laughs> like if physically I could not, um, so our pricing team at the highest level, I think I had 10 team, um, 10 team members on just that team. And then agents, um, that were presenting offers to sellers and everything at the height, we were at about four to five. And then the team of list agents, I was about four to five too. And then, uh, transaction coordinators for the different things. I had about four to five and then listing coordinators. Um, I had six. Um, at the height of that too. So and all of that. The Zillow iBuyer system, because I don't think a lot of people understand exactly what Zillow was doing. And that's no more, right? Like they pulled out of that. Right. Yeah. Yep. So basically um, what they were doing was what? Okay. So I mean, anybody could go on Zillow and remember how you had the uh, Zestimate aspect yeah. where you could go like type the address and it would give you an estimate. Well, they also had this big blue button on their screen where with whatever your Zestimate is, hey, would you get a cash offer? And then if any seller clicked that, um, they had a couple of questions like, like, you know, confirming the beds, bath, square footage, garage. Um, but then they would ask you if it was an HOA. They'd ask you like condition of your house, like if you made any updates 
dates and stuff. So there was like this little intake form a seller would have to do. And the second that they hit submit, my team would get alerted that, you know, someone was requesting a more in-depth CMA. And so like from that, we would obviously go into the MLS, we would pull some information about the market conditions, you know, and based on just the information the sellers gave us. And we'd come up with like a ballpark, you know, figure saying, hey, this is the range. We would submit that to Zillow. And then Zillow would then create their offer, which was a mix between our CMA and like their um, Zestimate kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. you know, they would compare all I don't even know how their algorithms work, honestly, <laughs> but they basically like put all that information together and they would say, okay, this is the offer we're willing to make. And it was Zillow actually buying the house. So then we'd get on the phone with the sellers to help them say, Hey, this is it. And the biggest thing was convenience. Obviously you're dealing with a cash buyer and as a seller, you could pick your closing date. You're not arguing with anybody or worried about financing. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, it went through. And so, I mean, convenience was a big seller because a lot of people bought or said, yeah, take my house. I don't care. <laughs> so you said you did how many in one year? Oh my gosh. So even with COVID, cause we did shut down for six months with COVID when, you know, that craziness, but we launched in October of 2019 and we had finalized the program just last year. So I think total active time, it was like 18 months, but say two years, just even that we did over 4,000 transactions That's in the Tampa crazy. Bay market. That is crazy. That's a lot that of was transactions. A, <laughs> <laughs> that it was a machine. Like I'm not even remotely kidding. Just oh like get yeah, a flow. And we were still only converting. Um, they were like as far as like sellers that really went through the whole process and had Zillow buy the home. Because again, it was it's a convenience factor, but that didn't mean it was always the best price. Or like there was other circumstances for the seller. Or you know our market was amazingly hot too, where, you know, you could go and people were doing grass. So it's not like it was every seller that went for it. Our conversion was only like 5% of the total amount of buyers or sellers, excuse me, that were requesting um, pricing for their houses and stuff like. So like for us to do 4,000 transactions out of, that was only 5% of the total amount of volume we got. Oh my gosh, that's insane. That's crazy. So mm-hmm. then um, was Zillow then paying you guys like a percentage um, or were you just getting the listing from Zillow afterwards or how did that work? Oh yeah, we had just a master listing agreement with them. So that's how we were responsible for listing their homes. No percentages on their stuff, which probably wasn't a bad thing. They didn't do so hot on it, which is why I think they killed the program. Granted, I mean, again, COVID made our market very weird um, with just the demands and everything. But then we also had a huge issue with supplies and the delay of being able to put properties back on the market because renovations and, you know, a renovation would typically take anywhere from like two to three weeks. And they were ending up like two months to four months just because we couldn't get the supplies to complete it. And, you know, that's holding costs. That's extra, you know, just costs in general. Um, The cost for, you know, materials had skyrocketed during the time. So like it was not a pleasant storm on that side of things. Yeah. I think every market in the entire country experienced that like over, you know, people were making crazy offers, like going in, you know, cash when they were getting financing and they like, I had one guy that was getting financing, putting 10% down, getting a gift for the 10%, but went in all cash just so he could get the deal. And I'm like, oh my God, these people are making like these crazy offers. And I was around back in 05, 06, 07 and 08. So I saw a lot of the similarities of like that. Wait wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) So tell, first of all, I think it's so funny that you were in Mike Ferry coaching because I was in Mike Ferry coaching too for six years. Yeah, when I was in the one-on-one, I loved it from 20, actually- probably longer than six years. I think I started like 2009 and then I got out of it in 2016. So, um, you know, coaching of any kind is huge. So important. And that really does speed up your learning curve. It really does. I, I don't care what industry you're in. If there's some kind of like knowledge-based coaching that you can get plugged into to like advance or just level up your knowledge faster, all the better. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you were with, um, so you've done a lot and obviously I think the big theme here is being able to pivot, right? Because every market's different. So like what the market was in 2010 or when you started and then 2016 and 19 is totally different and it's changing again. 
So you've worn mm-hmm. a lot of hats like throughout your career. Um, when you were just starting out, talk to me a little bit about like what your lead gen strategies were and then how they evolved or changed. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, so when I first started out, I was focusing and targeting, um, all the distressed properties. Cause again, I had investor clients, um, that, but that's what my market dictated. Honestly, if it was like a market now, it'd be entirely different. Like I would not do what I did, but that was, you know, the height of the foreclosure, height of short sales, literally you'd go down one block. Every other property was like either vacant or just like destroyed. And so uh, my lead gen strategy was legit walking neighborhoods, knocking on doors and being like, Hey, do you know your neighbor? Like, uh, I see the house is like, peace. I have someone who wants to buy it and fix it up. Like, do you have their info? And like, that's literally how I got started because it was that easy. And so I was able to make friends really quickly uh, with a lot of people, but also uh, it was weird to think about because I couldn't imagine trying to do that now. <laughs> like just walking a street neighborhood. I mean, first off, everyone with their freaking video doorbells and stuff would be calling you out and like neighbor. <laughs> like, <laughs> Here she uh, is again. <laughs> yeah. They're like, damn it, this chick. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, um, but at the same time, people would answer you through the ring doorbells. You could talk to them that way. So like, it's a give and take kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, that's how I honestly started out was that part. And then I slowly started gravitating towards getting like the list um, from like once I had money, then it was getting data list and getting the data collected. So then I was on a dialer where I could just talk to people and be like, hey, we saw that house. Would you sell it cash? Like, what's your, your number kind of thing? And right. that obviously was a lot easier than walking around in Florida heat. So I was all for that. <laughs> like, um, I was like, yes, let me do that. That sounds great. And then I can stay in air conditioning. So. <laughs> That's so funny. Cause I feel like we have so many similarities. So like back in 20, 2009, I literally was going to Lee clerk. Well, our area is Lee. So Lee clerk, yeah. that's our County. Um, and I was yep. pulling the list pendants and I'd be like, okay, today I'm going to go and do like this area. I had my little clipboard. I had all my list pendants yep. there. I'd mm-hmm. stop by the house, knock, knock, knock. Hi, I see that you got a list pendants in the mail, blah, 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 blah. Have you thought about what you're doing with the home? Okay. Let's list right. the short sale. And then I just yep. built my listing inventory that quickly because this person had a friend and a sister and this one had a short yep. sale and blah, blah, blah. So I went from like crying in 2008 because I had to like shut down my real estate and mortgage company. And I'm like, we're going (laughs) broke into like freaking blowing up quickly just based off of that. And what's funny is I just finished a book. It will be published in the next couple of weeks. um, Short Sale Secrets Unlocked, which is all about, you know, how to make a killing in this market because we are starting to see a lot of the, a lot more than we used to. So it's kind of you know what's, about that thing? what's that? Oh, sorry. I just say, you know, what's nuts about that whole thing. Just really quick sidebar is I was talking to one of our newer agents that, you know, is new to the industry and I was going through the contract and there's that one clause about short sales. And I'm like, Hey, have you heard of short sales? And they're like, no. And I'm like, really? No, you know, like it took me back a minute. Cause again, that's what I lived and breathed for so long that I completely forgot that the last two years, like that didn't exist. Right. It's I think it's awesome that you're bringing that back up because I told him like, Hey, this is going to be a thing again. I'm like, it's not going to like overtake our market, but just be aware. And it's, it's going to be a little more common than what we've seen. Yeah, totally. And a lot of people are like, Oh, well, there's so much equity now. Well, we're starting to see price decreases. I don't know about your area, but here we definitely are. And then if someone hasn't made their mortgage payment in two years, like all of that gets, so even if they had equity, Right. It's getting eaten yeah. up by their forced placed insurance, the past due taxes, all of the payments that they haven't made. Right. So <laughs> yeah, yep. all the fines stuff like that. Yeah, no, I, yeah, exactly. Oh. Completely agree. It's so coming. When you got into Mike Ferry and I feel like we probably are going to have like a similar story here. Were you then, okay, foreclosures kind of started to die, right? So then we had to transition again. Yep. Was it expired, FISBOs? Yep. I got, I mean, the good thing is I was used to a dialer because again, I started getting lists and just banging out phone calls and they're like, yeah, so you got to talk to people. I'm like, 
okay. I'm like, that did not scare me at all by this point. But they're like, yeah. So um, I was, that's when I learned that, you know, there was actually like Vulcan 7, Red X, like all these mojo and these dialers where it was like expired for sale by owner and stuff. And I'm like, sure, I'll talk to an expired all day long. And it was very funny how fast I went from like a buyer heavy agent to instantly a listing agent because all I would do every morning, um, and you know, my kids were younger at the time. So I really had to be very conscientious about how I spent my time in my career because I had to pick them up from school. I was always picking, you know, like I did not have like just free time to do whatever, which I think I'm actually very grateful for now because I had to focus. So like every morning they'd be at school by 7.30, my ass would be at the office by eight, but between eight and 10, I was on that phone, like hammering out anybody and everybody I could talk to, trying to set appointments like at one o'clock. And then I couldn't do another appointment because I had to pick up my kids at three. And then I would do more calls in the afternoon and evenings. And like, that was literally my life for like four years. And then, but I picked up listings and then, right. you know, every once in a while I'd have some, like I could only do like a six or seven o'clock, which, you know, since it was a one-off case, it was easy for me to get someone to like watch the kids and stuff. But for the most part, I'm like, Hey, you want to meet this afternoon? Or, you know, we want to do this. I, I'll meet you at your office. I've done that before for a listing appointment. So, and, you know, it was just like, wherever you can meet where it was in my window of time, like I will meet you. Right. And that was it. But yeah really banged out those phones and expires. And that was very, very, that was my success as a residential agent, like really going into sellers and listings and stuff. And since then, I've actually enjoyed it. It's all about systems. systems. And and I was the same. I had two little kids and I was like, okay, I don't want to work weekends. I don't want to work nights. I'm not going to sit open houses. And so I say from, you know, banging out expires and Fizbo's eight to 11 every day was my lead gen time. Like nothing interrupted that my listing appointments yeah. were two and four, um, Monday through Friday, Friday actually would take a half day. And then my kids, I picked them up at six. They were in aftercare. Sometimes I was a little late, <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, it really, hey, man, it that schedule. yeah, it works totally yeah. in the listings. I mean, uh, it's, if you have to work like that and not even like listings are the name of the game, in my personal opinion, you yeah. can systematize everything. You can have assistance, virtual assistance really help you with things. So exactly. It definitely made it easier. And then, you know, every once in a while you would pick up a buyer who would want to look at your listing and you like, you would show them you know, like if it didn't work out, they're like, Oh, well, can you show me other stuff? And I learned the hard way where I'd be like, Oh yeah, sure. Cause you know, I think it's somebody, but then you're like sending them stuff and like, Hey, can you go meet now? And I'm like, no, <laughs> and I'm like, oh crap. Uh, yeah, oh. And so then, you know, learning to rely on like, you know, other agents and just get the referral fee and stuff. Cause like, it was like, again, I did it a couple of times where I'm like, oh, and, you know, you go show them a property. Cause I could like coordinate childcare or something like that. And it wouldn't work out. And then I'm like, man, I, I can't do this. <laughs> it's just like, it's just from a actual, like real life um, circumstances and stuff like that. I, it just did not vibe with me and like yeah. my, my being, and I'm like, I I'll just, I'll refer you out, man. Like, I'm not going to waste my time like this. Cause I cannot do this. I know. Exactly. My kids were in all kinds of programs. Like they had dance, they had tennis, they had soccer. Um, my son had uh, Taekwondo and stuff like that. So like three to four nights a week, we we're busy and Saturdays, forget it. There's always <laughs> tournaments. So like, no, <laughs> it just it was not like good for my lifestyle. So I'm like, I'm going to stick with listings. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to me a little <laughs> bit now. Um, I have two more questions for you. Talk to me about <laughs> I Zillow iBuyer is over, right? So now what? <laughs> Oh, I know. Right. Um, I was like, oh, what should I be doing? Um, Doing it at that scale was very eye opening because I was like, OK, do I go back to just being a residential real estate agent and showing clients or doing listings again and stuff, which, you know, I can very well do. Um, But I was like, but does that make me happy now? Like, you know, like where am I in a professional level? And I, I was like, okay, you know, obviously I'll always like service my clients because I do believe in having an elevated experience and like everybody should get like a plus five star customer service. And okay. if you can't deliver that, it should be in the business, like hundred percent, you know, like that's my integrity responsibility aspect of it. So I was like, I could do so much better if I really start helping other agents get to that level. 
And so, you know, me and, you know, my partner, my husband, James, he's like really running our team now because we have, um, we just launched it again. This just ended with Zillow last year. So it took a little bit of time to like start building it back up and saying like what we wanted to do. And when we launched, you know, we initially had three agents and now we're up to seven, like already. And I think it's been a month or like two months, maybe it's basically this year is when that started. And our whole focus and core with this team is like, Hey, he's the face. He's definitely helping with the training, but he's keeping them, you know, accountable and, you know, on the face to face every day, like making sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing where I'm more in the back end, especially because of the Zillow program, making sure that the systems are streamlined and that they're functional in such a way that our agents aren't spending half their day just trying to deal with functioning in their CRM and are the systems talking right. And, you know, because that's the biggest thing. We have so many different products we have to use as realtors, I'm sure as lenders too, you know, like we have our MLS database, we have our CRM, we have whatever backend our brokerage wants us to use. And those are the basics. Then we have Supra and showing time and like all these different things that you're like plugged into a million different, uh, you know, apps. Right. And I'm like, there's an easier way. So I've been working on that side is like getting everything to talk to each other so that my, my agents are only in like one location, but we literally have everything in there. And then the resource library too, because like, okay, we have um, our MLS is like mid Florida, but then our local um, realtor association is called GTAR, but then we have Florida association. Those are two, again, two separate websites with resources and libraries and everything. But as an agent, now I have two more places to go or remember to go to, to right. find something which <laughs> makes my life harder <laughs> because I have to remember that crap. So being able to have like everything in one spot where I'm like, guys, come here. That's what I've been doing. And I've been having a lot of fun at like streamlining all of that for our team. So that way they're focused on just giving and delivering the best customer service to our clients. Right. So it's like, it's kind of cool to see that of like, yeah, I know what I want. I love doing this. So like, now let's make you guys do that same thing. Cause then all the, I mean, I love it or cause our community is going to end up winning because all of a sudden they're going to get a great level of customer service that I really feel has been lacking, especially in the last couple of years too. Yeah. Oh, I know. Exactly. I mean, the last couple of years, like anybody got into the business, like anybody could sell a home and now it's going to start to weed out all of the people that shouldn't have, you know, shouldn't have been in the business to begin with. So, and it sounds like you like right. a lot of like systematizing things, streamlining things, putting systems together and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the great yep. thing about real estate, and I tell people all the time, is like when you get in as a realtor, right, there's so many different avenues that you can take, whether you want to deal with investors or, you know, wholesaling or divorce or expires or in it for you, you like more of the operations management type. Um, and you've seen yep. and worn so, so many hats, so you have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's been really cool too, because I'm big on creating generational wealth and I want agents like as an agent, everybody should start getting into real estate as investments too, because there's so many different avenues of you making money and equity and stuff like that. So yes, be an agent, do that as your regular job and everything. But this should be like a supplemental thing that almost every agent should like naturally have as part of their arsenal right. of like, you know, for financial stability and growth. So that way, you know, you get out of like, oh, if I don't make a sale this month, I'm not gonna be able to pay my, you know, bills. You know, right. you have like a couple of years where you, that's life, but when you're long-term in this game and this is really your career, that should not be your life when you're five, six, you know, 10 years in and stuff. Right. You should definitely have other avenues you picked up at that time. So part of our team and what we've done is not just the residential real estate and everything, but we have a whole investment um, like arm, if you will, side of it where I do have another one of my partners because there's three of us that are like the leads. It's myself, my husband, James, and then Mauricio is our other partner. He handles the investment side. So we have a whole um, group of people that are just like, banging out the phones, trying to get motivated sellers. So that way we have the opportunity for wholesale. And then we're teaching our other agents about that side. But then also, um, you know, what I've always said is taking doors, like personally, getting back into investments and stuff like that. So then showing those opportunities and being able to teach our agents too, that they can have investments, even if you don't have a ton of money, like you can get into this game, right? Let's show you how to do that. And so Mauricio is really spearheading that. So that way we can show the creative financing and how you could be, you know, extra um, passive income from your properties without having it all like set up for you too. 
So I love that we have like that all encompassing, you know, as part of our group and stuff like that. So that's been really, really cool too with this whole thing. Yeah. And right now is a great time to get back into investing. I mean, we sat on the sidelines for a couple of years because we're like, it's just way too, you know, I saw what the market was doing and I was like, I'm not buying now, but now we're buying. We're ready. (laughs) And that was like, (laughs) so one last question, um, what advice would you have for any new agents starting, just starting out? Um, ooh. Oh, well, I mean, it's something I've said with my team is just you definitely don't be scared to ask questions because there's never a wrong question. Like there's, e- there's a million resources out there between, you know, either get into coaching, your own brokerage, um, even networks. There's so many like Facebook groups, um, even like locally. So yeah. uh, for example, I'm in Tampa, so I could literally go on Facebook and go to yeah, Tampa Realtors and there's a group about it. So like, there's a place I can always go to and be like, Hey, has anyone done this? Or, you know, like what's going on you know, and ask questions there's going to be someone that has the answer for you. And then you can end up creating like friendships and creating mentorships with just little things like that. So like, please, please, please don't think you have to do this all on your own. That was one of the things, again, when I started out, I kind of did that approach where I'm like, I don't need anybody. Cause I, yeah, I don't, again, ego, whatever. But like, I wanted to prove that I could do it on my own, but I definitely feel like it hurt me in the long run because it hindered me versus being part of a collaborative and like a group and coaching where we could like bounce ideas off each other, create friendships, and then really take off with it. And you never really know because you don't know. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, no, just definitely ask the questions, get connected with groups and stuff like that. And you're going to find not every group's for you. And that's okay. You know, like you can say you'll have somebody right now that I know absolutely adores door knocking neighborhoods and stuff like that. And they're not scared of it. And they make money that way. Because again, as you said, Danielle, there's so many different avenues for a realtor to be successful in this business, but that doesn't mean every single one of those is for you. Exactly. So you're going to have to test and try all of them to really see what makes sense for like you, your personality, your lifestyle, like figure it out, <laughs> you know, like, and don't quit. Like, you know, you're going to have to go through some trials and errors. You're going to make mistakes. We all do. Like, you're not going to get every sale anyway, because that, you know, laws are already telling us that that's impossible. No agent I've ever known on this planet has hundred percent like close rate, right. like it just doesn't happen. Exactly. So like, if I already know I'm not going to get them all, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'll just get what I get. <laughs> yes, exactly. No. And I, joining a team is for some people coaching is for others. Not everybody has, you know, the money to get into coaching right away. Um, so, but mm-hmm. definitely, you know, surrounding yourself with other people is so, so, so important in learning and just Facebook groups. I mean, just going online and finding yeah. those groups, the big thing, and, and this is what, cause I, I do coaching. And the big thing I tell my coaching clients is like, don't have analysis paralysis, just get out there and do it. Because if you don't do anything, right, you do nothing, you're going to be confused. But when you take imperfect action, imperfect action is going to give you clarity, because then you're going to start to see what's work, what's going to work for you, what's not going to work for you. But if you have that analysis paralysis, yeah. if you don't do anything, you're always going to be in a state of confusion. So just start doing something and it will all, you know, you'll figure everything out. So hundred percent agree. Um, and I hate the idea of people thinking like things have to be perfect anyway, because this right. is real estate. There's no thing as perfect. There's no, there's never a perfect property. There's never a perfect loan. There's never a perfect time. Like everything exactly. just has to be what makes the most sense for you. And so being able to, to me, I always love the idea of an analogy of like, you know, uh, action equals progress versus, you know, trying to go for perfection because right. you're always going to learn something. Whether it's right or not, you know, at least you'll be able to pivot to figure out what does make sense for you. But that never happens if you never take action. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. I feel like everything that we've talked about, like we're on the same wavelength. (laughs) A lot of the similar, (laughs) we took a lot of the similar paths with coaching and the short sales and the door knocking and the expires and the kids (laughs) and the schedule and everything else. So it was awesome talking to you. I think people are learned a ton from this um and it was awesome so thank you so much and when I'm in Tampa we have to get together 
I know you're not even that far. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I am down and stuff like that because that that'll be fun. I love meeting like minded people that aren't afraid to just like go for Same. it and see what happens. <laughs> Same. Well, thank you thank so much. You. I really appreciate it. This was awesome. Tons of great advice for any new agent starting out or any agent that's been in the business for a while that might need to pivot because they feel stuck. Right. So. Awesome. Great advice. Thank you so much for being on. Finally, um, I really appreciate it. And everybody have a great day. Bye. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Real Estate Secrets Unlocked. Don't forget to subscribe to our show on your favorite platform. And we would love your feedback. Check us out on social and let me know what topics you want more of. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and our show. I'm your host, Danielle Damianov, and until next time, stay motivated, stay excited, and keep growing in this crazy world of real estate. Thanks for listening to Real Estate Secrets Unlocked.